it, Saints. Chicken Monkeys. Uh, I'm going to try to make this one shorter because my Monday um, daily dose of the gospel is uh, a little long. I try to keep between five and seven minutes or so, but, you know, uh, sometimes it takes longer. But uh, I wanted to go over this because now I'm going to I'm going to show you something here. And this is the simplest way I can say it. So many people are confused of the law. We know that the law was a shadow, right? A good things to come so they all point to Jesus and something in him it could not make us righteous it could only show us that we're not righteous and that we're guilty and unable to keep God's standard of righteousness which is perfection but Jesus alone did he fulfilled it so uh, it's a schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ so the point of it is to show us our guilt so that we see we need our need for a savior right it's also to show us that God really hates these things. These are things that his children shouldn't do. Okay. And it's never been for us to look righteous in God's sight. Like if we think I'm, I'm not doing this. I'm not doing that. Jesus upped the standards and really showed you that if you even look at a woman with lust. You've already committed an adultery in your heart. If you hate your brother without a cause, you're a murderer. You're no better. It's in thought, word, and deed. And the reason we cannot do it, we can't fulfill it. Now, men can keep the letter of the law. Does that mean, oh, you can abstain from murder. You can abstain from adultery. But you haven't fulfilled that law because your flesh secretly wanted to do it. It just knew it wasn't, wasn't supposed to. And there was consequences for it get it now so because of our fallen flesh there's nothing good in us and this is what these people can't get i haven't sinned all day. i haven't sinned in 30 years <laughs> start laughing i'm like okay sure sure you didn't you just sin right there you just boasted but anyway um i wanted to show you this in romans what was it romans 7 about the law so this is this is how i like to give an example and i may do like a one minute or less short on this picture that the law is just a mirror to show us there's dirt on our face okay you don't take the mirror off the wall to get the dirt off your face it can only show you it's there you need something else to get it off right so you need something to wash the dirt off what was that it was the blood of jesus so the law is a mirror and says, uh-oh, you're dirty. You can't go looking like that, right? So what will clean me up? Well, there, there's only one way, and that's Jesus Christ. Here it is. That's the point. Remember that. It will never make you righteous. It can only condemn you. That's all it ever does. And that is why it's called the ministry of death, the ministry of condemnation. Why do you begin in grace, return back to some legalism, and then want to know why you're so miserable and feeling condemned? We rest in Christ. He did it perfectly. Why would I try to bring my righteousness, because what it says, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, that's my performance. What I, how well I keep these or don't keep these. What I do and don't do that's righteous and not righteous. Why would I forsake perfection, God's perfect righteousness? Jesus, he never broke it. He never sinned. And if we trust him, we get his perfection imputed on us. And our own sins not held against us. God sees us as righteous, right? Say it's called imputed righteousness, not infused. That's where this is this doctrine. They think, well, God gives you the power to live sinlessly. And then it, that's not what it means. That's a heresy. I think Pelagian, Pelagian did something like that. And that's a common theme in the church. They're claiming, no, it's God giving you power. to. He does give us power and, and desire. We have the Holy Spirit, right? But we still have flesh. And in my flesh dwells no good thing. So I'm not bringing any of me in. Why would you exchange perfect righteousness for one you know fails? 
If it didn't, we wouldn't need a savior. That's why the high priest inspected the lamb and not the guy who brought the lamb. He already knew he failed. That's why he brought the sacrifice. And our sacrifice, our lamb is perfect. He's not inspecting the guy that brings the lamb. I'm bringing the lamb. All right, so remember that, okay? The mirror just shows you're, you're, you're dirty. It can't clean it off your face. So you don't take the mirror off and clean your face with it. You're going to get a lot of cuts. I'm going to tell you that. So look at verse 7 in Romans chapter 7. What shall we say then? Is the law sin? God forbid. Nay, I had not known sin, but by the law. So what does the law do? Show you how sinful you are. What's wrong, what's right. For I had not known lust, except the law had said, Thou shalt not covet. See, he wanted something somebody else had. And he didn't even know it was wrong until he saw God say, don't want other people's stuff. Oh, now he did something wrong. See how it makes you aware? Mm-hmm. But sin, taking occasion by the commandment. Th does the law help you walk in righteousness? No. No, they proved that. The law wasn't kept by anyone perfectly in the Old Testament. Only Jesus. Why? Because we all inherited the Adamic sin in our flesh. It's called the uh, infirmity in our flesh. So those of you that think you're keeping it and haven't sinned. Yeah. Well, how'd you get that skin off you? You know, it's, it's talking about the circumcision of the heart. We're going to do something on that, a short one. I'll probably get to that for Wednesday. But it says, But sin, taking occasion by the commandment, wrought in me all manner of concup concupiscence. For without the law, sin was dead. For I was alive once without the law. But when the commandment came, sin revived and I died. Huh, wonder why you're walking around condemned, wondering if you're safe. Well, you're looking at you and your righteousness, not the righteousness of God by faith in Christ, period. So it says, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but the righteousness of God, which is by faith. That's it, faith in Jesus. All right. And the commandment, which was ordained to life. Now, see, keeping God's laws is supposed to bring life to us because the wages of sin is what? Death right that's why when adam and eve sinned that day they became mortal uh so this actually kills us all right the commandment which was ordained to life i found to be unto death the commandment which was ordained to life i found to be unto death for sin taking occasion by the commandment deceived me and by it slew me. Mm. How many people are deceived into thinking that they are keeping it? You offend in one, you're guilty of all, remember? Was that then which is good made death unto me? God forbid. But sin, that it might appear sin, working death in me by that which is good, See, the law's good. The law's not bad. The law's not evil. You're just got a problem. And it's called sinful flesh. That sin by the commandment might become exceedingly sinful. We need to see how sinful our sin is. And that's the point of the law. Okay? So it's not to make us righteous. So don't get tricked into thinking that that's going to make us righteous. For we know that the law is spiritual. But I am carnal. Sold under sin. No such thing as a carnal Christian. I am carnal. Sold under it. There's no such thing as a carnal Christian. I am carnal. It just means I am in the flesh. I live in a body with, with flesh. Now, I'm not in the flesh. I am in the spirit because Christ lives in in me right can we walk in the flesh sure can that's why we're told to reckon that guy dead right we talked about that yesterday so this is 
about letting the law have its purpose and using it lawfully. It is not for us to earn righteousness. It is a schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ. Once you come to Christ, the law has done its job. You see? Now, Paul admits he's still, he's still alive. He's still got sinful flesh on him. And that is why it doesn't work for mankind. Because of the infirmity of our flesh. Because we, uh, we have this sin that we have inherited. And it, now, now, I've heard people say, well, this is saying Paul before he got saved. So you're saying Paul said he was perfect and never sinned again after he got saved. That is absolutely ridiculous. And anyway, this entire speech is in present tense. I am carnal. Of course it's present tense. Did all of a sudden the flesh fall off his bones? No. When it says I'm carnal, it just means I have flesh. I'm walking in in terrestrial flesh that's all he's saying did that stop no not until he was executed so this he's not past tense he's still walking around alive with flesh on his bones so don't let anybody use that to trip you up for we know that law is spiritual but i am carnal sold under sin for that which i do i allow not for what i would that i do not but what i hate that do i so he wants to do one thing but this body keeps working against him. If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that is good. Now it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. See, God's not holding it against Renee. It is the Renee's dead flesh that does that. Now that's not an excuse to do more of it. I'm just telling you, God's not holding it against us anymore. Because that's not who we are. We are a child of God. In Christ. So. Now there is no more I that do it. But sin that dwelleth in me. For I know that in me. That is in my flesh. Dwelleth no good thing. That is what people cannot get. That's why they, they still. They think them. Eating certain things. Is actually. Making them righteous. In the sight of God. When they forget. The point of it. Was to make them a holy people. To be able to recognize Christ. When he came. It's all pointing to Jesus. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good, I find not. For the good that I would, I do not. But the evil that I would not, that I do. Now if I do that I would not, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man... But I see another law in my members, that means in his flesh, in his hands and everything, warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. So sin dwells in the flesh. It's condemned in the flesh and it doesn't inherit the kingdom. That is not you. O wretched man that I am, not was, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord so that then with the mind I myself serve the law of God but with the flesh the law of sin. To me it is clear as a bell that Paul is saying I'm still walking around in human flesh. I still fail but God's not seeing that as me. And as much as I want to do good I have to work against this flesh because it, it wars against the spirit. It's talking about a battle. Now you, if you deny that the battle exists, you can't win it. It's important that we acknowledge this. It's not an excuse to do bad things. It's a way for you to understand if your heart condemns you, God is greater than your heart. It's not you. He knows that. You are his child. You're already seated in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. You are born of God. And one day, you'll lose this uh, dead flesh. And you'll get a celestial body like Jesus's that doesn't have that infirmity in it. Okay, you guys. God bless you.